You ever wonder why people get so upset by men going their own way and what we represent? I think men as well feel threatened by this because it shows the shallowness on their part of worshipping a commodity that essentially in reality has so little value. Nice tits and ass. What value is that to the, to the world? How does that forward human knowledge? How does that increase our well-being as human beings, as a species? Great tits and ass, great fuck maybe. So what? See, when I'm saying that, I suppose on some level, I'm calling men out too. Hmm, I suppose. You know, recently I got a PM accusing me of uh, misanthropy. Hmm, I suppose I can play that game. I'm not a fan of nether apes. Nether ape is a term I have devised. I devised a long time ago, but I decided to introduce into my videos. I use it in common parlance with friends. For people who just don't think, who just... Uh, you remember the autopilot function. They're running on autopilot. Men and women alike. I suppose there's something misanthropic to that. But the problem in the world is, <laughs> quite simply, a lack of thinking. Uh, be it in men and women, although in the case of women... It, it's even more pronounced than it is in men. But for man, for man to be reminded that he's pursuing this commodity that really has no value beyond maybe a quick fuck, uh, it, it's it's I suppose a bit alarming to them that they're that they're they're reminded of this. Uh, and once again, men will fight for the illusion and delusion as long as possible. Uh, it's quite incredible the the level, the energy they, they put into to defend uh, to defend women. I think it's really ultimately at the end of the day the symbolism. It's really the symbolism. It's not that MGTOW have any power. We don't. It's the same reason that certain people uh, <laughs> whose name I won't mention get so upset by uh, MGTOW. Is that it's the symbolism. It's a threat to their delusions, it's a threat to their illusions, it's a threat to their structured life, the life that they believe is uh, true in every respect. When you offer something up that opposes that in a philosophical sense, then I suppose that is a threat. But it's not a tangible threat, not really. Like I said, we don't have the numbers. There will never be a, a, a group of men en masse who advocate what Stardust is advocating. That's just not going to happen. Uh, most men will live and die by the pussy. Th that's how most men operate. If people want to call me a misanthrope for that, feel free to do so. I don't care. You see, I've reached the point in my vi making videos where I, I really, I'll make the videos I certainly want to help those who are willing to listen, but I'm, I'm making them uh, for those people and, and for myself. People can call me whatever names they want to. It doesn't, doesn't bother me, and I find it amusing sometimes, but I really do think ultimately it's the symbolism. It's, it's, it's the symbolism. Uh, even the symbolism of the so-called marriage strike. I mean, these are essentially men who... Uh, would have no pro problem being worker drones or would have no problem if the uh, conditions were different. Well, okay. But that that's a threat. That's a, that, There's a symbolism behind that. There's, and so MGTOW, at least of the sort I advocate, is a much more cerebral approach to the world. It's a withdrawing from the world. And I think people feel threatened by that. Um, and people get really upset about it. Even, like I said, there's no tangible threat. I mean, I'm not going to affect any change in the world. I have no illusions about what I do here. I don't think anything's going to change. Anything. And people can call me whatever they want for as many times as they want, as long as they want. But, like I said, I do believe very strongly in presenting the truth. I don't care how discomforting it is, whether people get depressed by it. 
whether it makes them utterly miserable or happy or whatever. I don't care about any of that. The only thing I care about is what is true, as far as I understand it to be. And beyond that, I care not. So if I put out a perspective that people don't like and it depresses them, quite frankly, I don't care. I'm not here to make anyone happy. I'm not even here to make myself happy. I'm here to understand. And I would hope that my subscribers are also here to understand rather than to pursue some ethereal, effete notion of happiness, uh, which quite frankly is akin to the whole notion of romantic love. It has about as much substance as water vapor does. Although theoretically water vapor has a lot more substance than that. Still, think about the symbolism of men going their own way. Think about what that entails, particularly my brand. People don't like hearing it. Even men don't like hearing it. Even men going their own way don't like hearing it. You know how many PMs I get uh, constantly. That's why I'm talking about this, but going on about how you know my message is depressing and uh, I need to offer men more hope. I'm not here to offer you hope. If you want hope, you can believe in Jeebus. I'm here to tell you the truth. Whether it makes you happy or not, whether it depresses you or not, I don't care. However, if you seek understanding, I do care. That's how I roll. Anyway, take care. Think about the symbolism. Have a good night. And this video is essentially about what MGTOW is and the path we're on. You see, it seems to me that the events that occurred in California recently really have shown us that MGTOW, in it, its legitimate form, is the optimal path forward for men. And I would even be bold enough to say for, for the vast majority of men. I mean, gone are the days that this fantasy of wedded bliss that was promised to men uh, are is even remotely tenable. These, these days are long, long gone. And of course, there are different reasons for going your own way. There are different MGTOW. Some men would get back to the plantation in a heartbeat, as long as they fix the laws. But as Barbarossa, once again, I'm paraphrasing here, said, I mean, that's the best we can do, you know? Uh, fix the law so women can stop being mean to us? I mean, it's pathetic. It really is. It's fucking pathetic. And why is MGTOW the best way going forward? I'll tell you. It's quite simple. You see, there's a difference between boycotting something and protesting something and ignoring something. If you want to boycott a certain product, you probably want to boycott it because, well, you don't like the company or you want the, co the product to be cheaper so, or for whatever reason related to that. But once the company gives in to your demands, you just go back, right back, to buying the product and supporting the company. That's essentially what a lot of men going their own way are doing, in my opinion. And you might not like want to hear that, and uh, I'm used to saying things that people don't want to hear and getting negative feedback for that, but that's, that's the case. Waiting, on the waiting to go back to the plantation, and it's unlikely that'll ever happen, I think even the men waiting on the plantation know that, is effectively boycotting a product, uh, waiting for the price to go down so you can go back to buying and engaging in your consumerism. The difference here between that and men who go their own way for the sake of the greatest prize that men can ever achieve, that is personal freedom, is that we're not boycotting anything. We're ignoring it completely. MGTOW are different from people such as Elliot Rogers and True Force Loneliness guys. We don't hate. We don't hate women. But we don't love women either. We're just indifferent to them. And this indifference is the key, because this indifference is the key to the way forward. It's the way we're going to push past all these boundaries. Now, MRAs might argue, sure, men are, no matter what they are or where they are, are going to be affected by laws. Well, not if we don't get married. And yeah, feminism has infiltrated the in educational institutions of Western nations. There's no doubt about that. But the great thing about going your own way is all of us, I ultimately believe, have a thirst for knowledge, a desire to understand the world. And that desire might be uh, differentiated. Some of us just want to know the basics, and some of us want to get in depth. But, but we want to understand. 
we don't need to go to university. I've been to university a lot. It didn't really do a whole lot for me. I can tell you, uh, tell you a bit about linguistics and some other stuff, but yeah. The greatest lessons I've learned are the ones I've taught myself via my desire to acquire knowledge. And that's a key aspect of MGTOW. And as the, my subscriber, Shu uh, Xiao, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing his name right, uh, wrote in the comments, MGTOW confuses people. No, nobody really gets us. We're not angry. We're not bitter. We just are. We do our own thing. And we recognize the ultimate prize. The ultimate prize is personal freedom. Not being beholden to obligations thrust upon you by society at large. Not being beholden to responsibilities, one responsibility after the other, put upon you by in-laws, women, your wife, your girlfriends. For what? So you can fuck? Another sub of mine made a nice comment the other day as well. He said, and I'm paraphrasing, yeah, he, when he was in a relationship, he was basically suffering 23 hours a day and getting sex one hour a day. And that's, what, that's, all, that's, that's all it is. You know, the church of sex, women, all this stuff, we're indifferent to it. We do our own thing, and we don't fucking give a fuck. And that's the most important thing. This will serve to confuse, and people won't get us. They can call us whatever they want to, and it won't matter, because we're always going to be doing our own thing. Now, this is important. Why? Because I believe the legitimacy of our message and the legitimacy of men going their own way is contained in the desire for freedom and the indifference to the opinions of others. And in contrast to some people, such as Salman, who believe you need to market MGTOW like it's some cheap hair, hair or skin uh, skincare product, I think the, the truth, legitimacy, and the evidence of the message and the things we do and the communications we engage in, is all these things are far more powerful than any marketing campaign. We don't need to market MGTOW like some cheap-ass product on sale at a, uh, at a garage sale. You know? And, I, and I, I reserve the right to disagree with other people who are allegedly going their own way. Let me tell you why. Because in our very nature, it's our very nature as men to dissent. We don't consent. That's what women do. They just agree. They agree so they can harmonize and get along. We don't do that. If the truth is at stake, if something is important at stake, at stake, we dissent. We go our own way, whether we openly acknowledge that or not. So I'll tell you, we don't need to market MGTOW. We don't need to market a message. We don't need to market the, a philosophy or an individualistic way of life, as if it were some cheap fucking product being sold at a, at a garage sale, like a used car salesman. It's fucking bollocks. It's bullshit. We don't need to do that. Because, once again, the most important thing, the most important aspect of our message is individual freedom. All of us are doing our own thing, and we stop giving a fuck. Therein lies the power, therein lies the rub. What's the world going to do? What's the world going to do in a few short decades from now, assuming we're all still alive, when more and more men wake up, start doing their own thing, start choosing freedom, and most importantly, stop giving a fuck? You don't need to market stop giving a fuck. You don't need to market freedom. You see, men, and I believe this firmly, ultimately, 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 when the stakes are so high, we'll choose freedom over all the responsibilities and accolades that women and society and the rest of the world can thrust upon them. Remember that inner conflict we all, we've all experienced and all had. Men going their own way have evolved past that, most of us at least. We've evolved to the point where freedom is the, num the number one thing in this game. We don't think about the, the, the struggle, you know, the bull and rut as Barbarossa once put it. We don't think about that anymore, at least I don't. I just think about all the things I can do in my life, on my own time, with my freedom. And you don't need to market freedom. You don't need to sell it like some cheap-ass product. And you don't need to market or sell something as, in my opinion, as profound, but also as self-evident as choosing to go in, go in your own way, to go your own way for the sake of freedom. Because it's, it's right there. I mean... 
Once you've realized these things, you know that there's no other alternative. You can't even go back. Even if you've been on, even if you've been waiting, waiting it out and holding out and waiting to go back to the plantation to your slave master so you can get your blow jobs and feel like you've accomplished something in life in the eyes of others, in the eyes of women, in the eyes of society, in the eyes of the world, to make your ego feel big, even those men are beginning to realize it's too late. And they're beginning to taste the fruits of freedom. And that freedom, that freedom is just incredible. If it were a meal, it would be ambrosia. And they're beginning to recognize it, and they're waking up, and they're realizing, holy shit, why did I ever want to go back to the plantation to begin with? Even if they change the laws tomorrow, would you be safe? Would you be safe from a nagging wife who would make your life miserable, whether you could be punished by it legally for, for altercations with her or not? No. You wouldn't be safe. You'd be living a life of misery, constant nagging, and for what? Well, because you ejaculated in there and you have some progeny running around? Good for you. Huge accomplishment. No. Freedom is the ultimate message, and that's the ultimate message of MGTOW. It doesn't need to be marketed. It doesn't need to be sold like some cheap good. That's not, it's, because it's so internal. It's so inherent, and I'd argue congenital to the nature of man that we don't need any, all these other things. We don't need all these other trappings. We don't need marketing, let the MRAs do that, let the sand men do that. We just need to do our own thing for our own sake. We need to keep on spreading the message. We need to talk about it. We need to further invest, as to investigate. We need to further understand. That's the nature of MGTOW. Now, like I said, you might think MGTOW is one thing, uh, or I might think it's another, but at the end of the day, MGTOW is a state of awareness. Some of us might just be aware of certain things, or only want to be aware of certain things. Maybe you don't want to know what Homo erectus was doing that you know, led to certain forms of human Homo sapien behavior. It's entirely possible. I do. So there are different levels of awareness. It doesn't matter, though. That thirst for knowledge is the embodiment of what it means to be a man. That desire for freedom is the embodiment of what, it needs to be, of what it means to be a man. All of these things, they come together. That's why I see MGTOW, in Western nations at least, as a form of future uh, for men. Now, I'm not talking specifically about reproduction. I'm talking about a mental future, a future of the mind, as I like to say in German, a future of the Geist. Because you get these guys like PUAs, PUAs who, you know, they're creating the problem. They're fueling the problem. They're funneling all this shit into the problem. They, they're servants of the church. And this is voluntary excommunication we're engaging in. They're servants of the church. True force loneliness guys who are just angry and bitter and who would, I mean, within a, without batting an eyelash, uh, turn the other way just so to serve their, their female masters just because, well, they can't get laid and should a woman be so kind as to grant access to her pussy to them, you can be sure they'd be gone. And MRAs who just enjoy arguing with feminists about nonsense and doxing them and whatever. You know? We don't care about any of that. We don't give a fuck. We're moving forward. We're going our own way. Freedom is the message. Preach it, brothers. Take care. The, uh, the words female manipulation really go hand in hand. And there's a biological basis for it. Um, there's a biological basis for the ability of the female, the human female, to manipulate the male and essentially to get him to do her bidding. This is rooted in our evolutionary history and it has uh, deep-seated consequences, in my opinion, particularly for men. Of course, it has consequences for women as well, but that's not what this channel is about. And uh, that's not, also not my concern. And I will admit that some of this is freely plagiarized, if such thing is possible, on YouTube from Girl Writes What. I'm also going to post this video as a response, well, not really a response so much as a, an addition to what I had previously said about the uh, upwards battle, um, the upwards biological battle, the, up, the battle up the hill, as it were, the, the hill of biology. Because it is uh, related to that. And as Girl writes what has said on a few occasions, that uh, in ancient times, uh, or in prehistoric times, the man defended, uh, defended himself with a spear and the woman defended herself with the man. Um, it makes sense. Um, 
if you, even if you don't grant too much credence to evolutionary psychology, that women have over the millennia and millions of years, the female, the human female, developed an ability to, they're much more efficient at, social, at socializing than men are. I mean, that, that's uh, been documented in a whole bunch of studies. I mean, that, that's what they used to do. They had to do that in earlier times, cooperation, things of that nature. Um, and certainly, they must have, in the course of that, uh, of that span of time, also developed the skills, the, corol uh, the, corol the corollary skills of, of being able to uh, make a man do what she wants. And uh, whilst the, the origin or the driving force behind that might be the man's desire to procreate, i.e. pussy, um, I think women are indeed equipped with a whole set of skills that allow them to further that. That is, uh, social skills, cognitive skills, and uh, other skills um, that might not be uh, entirely detectable. See, I'm uh, contrast to what many might believe. I'm not interested in women bashing. I will grant them. Uh, women are clearly better than men at certain things, and that's a biological basis. Just as men are better at women than women at certain things. And one of these things, as I said, uh, have been saying is manipulation. Women are consummate manipulators. Um, they, you can see this, on, see this on so many levels. And in modern society, you can see this manifested in the way they manipulate social justice, the way they manipulate the court systems, and yeah, the way they manipulate uh, the government itself, the state itself, uh, to their benefit. And when I say that, is I'm not saying that they you know, march to the, the Capitol building uh, of said country and then, you know, wave a magic wand and uh, cast their their eldritch, eldritch uh, witch powers, but rather they usually get this uh, these things affected uh, through the work of men, as usual. You see where I'm getting at, uh, what I'm getting at here. Women are, in fact, consummate manipulators, and I suspect in previous yuns, Maybe they had to be in order to uh, ensure the survival, survival of our species. And I don't think a lot of men get this, uh, that women are more skillful manip manipulators than men are. Um, it's not to say that's universally so, that in each and every case, but generally that is the case. And I'm certainly not saying this to put down men <laughs> at all. I'm actually saying this as a warning. The consequence, in my opinion at least, the consequence that needs to be taken from this as a man is that you must be especially circumspect in your dealings with women on all levels. But God forbid you decide to enter into some sort of, some kind of romantic dalliance with a female, you need to be on guard. Um, and I think the healthiest and best thing a man can do, quite frankly, is to maintain the default position of mistrust towards the human female. And this needs to mean, be maintained indefinitely. Now, by mistrust, I don't mean uh, when she leaves the house, or let, let's say you're in one of those uh, miasmic things we call relationships, uh, every time she, and she leaves the house, it doesn't mean you go through a pocketbook every two seconds. But with regards to her verbal communication, with regards to even her gestures, and regard, and certainly with regards to what she plain, plainly and openly states as her intentions, uh, you should not trust that. Should you believe it to be the exact opposite? Well, I think you'd probably have to take that on a case-by-case -case basis. But... The understanding here is simply that women are better manipulators than men. Much of that manipulative energy that they have access to is directed towards men um, for reasons of history and biology. So it is essential that the man be on guard. If men in this particular respect are quote-unquote inferior to women, if we are not as skilled, manip as skilled manipulators as women, if we are not as skilled 
at manipulating other people. And if we are indeed quite possibly, well, I think it's very likely, more susceptible to it, A, because of our insane addiction towards women, and B, simply because we don't have the exact same faculties that allow us to exercise the same manipulation against other people, then there can really only be one default position for every man, and that is the position of mistrust towards females, particular and particularly in the romantic sphere. Gods forbid you decide to actually enter into one of those miasmic things we call relationships. Well, you know, by all means, I'm not, I'm not here to tell anyone what to do. It's, it's your life, and no, and, and that's also that's also not an admonition or I'm not reproaching anyone. I really believe, you know, you, you do whatever you got to do. But the default position with regards to women should also always, always, always be um, one of, of distrust. You probably could extend it to most people, including men, but I'm concentrating on this, essentially this romantic constellation we have here. So, and that needs to be taken, on, as I said, on a case-by-case -case basis. If, it's not necessarily saying if, 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 if woman says A, that she means necessarily Z, you're not skipping down the alphabet, but uh, be cautious. It's uh, very important, in my opinion. Um, and I think we've all floundered and, and made massive mistakes because we uh, trust women. Extending this, um, the proponents of of the relationship proponents, people who, uh, who are constantly telling us how good it is to have relationships and how important it is. And, you know, you can define importance how you, as, as you will, uh, certainly in terms of procreation or what have you, yes, relationships are important. But um, who, who are the proponents always telling us that trust is the basis of every relationship? Now, this might sound like a blanket statement, and I don't have uh, statistical evidence in front of me, uh, but based on, not my feeling, but what I've read over and over and over again, it's very often women who are making this statement. Um, and, and, and once again, this statement, it's not so much a, a shaming tactic, as it, it's, a, it's a tactic of manipulation. I think when women tell men, you, know, you, you need to trust me, and we, we the relationship cannot work without trust. It, it is essentially telling the man to drop his guard. You know, don't, don't, don't be as cautious. Don't be distrustful. You can trust me. And um, many men do that. I think a lot of us do. It's not a good idea. It's not a good idea at all. Um, I think it's downright dangerous in many ways because. As I said, we are very susceptible to female manipulation. Just as females have evolved to be consummate masters of that of, manipula of manipulation of men, we have been, it's very sadly, we have evolved to become consummate pawns of that manipulation in many regards. The only things you can do to defend yourself against that, of course, are coming aware realizing these things, internalizing it, and I do mean internalizing it. It's one thing, as they say, to recognize something that's entirely a different thing to actually put it into practice. So internalizing this realization is the most important thing. And then just be on guard. Don't, don't trust anything a woman tells you, um, especially, especially when it comes to those uh, miasmic things we call relationships. And I think that's the most important thing you can do uh, in this regard. Now, now, if you choose to engage in relations with a woman, just do not trust her. Um, now, some people might argue that'll you know, drive you crazy, make you paranoid. Well, maybe it will, but the, uh, the alternative is you trust her and uh, she leads you into utter ruination and destroys your life, potentially. I don't think that's necessarily a good uh, option. So I think the default position is uh, distrust. And of course, always, always remain aware that a, a woman will always put her own interests ahead of yours and that she has no interest in you beyond that which you can do for her. 
if you actually feel content in that role, I'm not necessarily going to criticize you for that. But um, if, if if you are simply if you are content as a, a a thing of human doings, as many have said, as opposed to a human being, then remember that uh, a you will be manipulated, and b um, those doings will be manipulated as well, and c as soon as you can't do any more, you will be done away with. So anyway, I been thinking about this the entire day and uh, I thought I'd make a video about it so cheers for watching. Hi, uh, I'm making this video in part as a response to a comment I saw. I don't remember the uh, gentleman's name but he wrote something to the effect of uh, not on my channel, it was on something else. That, you know, Deep down uh, we men, as much as we deny it, we, we want to be with women, we belong with them. And uh, this got me thinking, well, less thinking than just uh, motivated me to make this video. And this video is all about coming to terms with reality. I, I want, it's not a commandment, but I, I, I'm a, look, I want to make this video because I feel compassion. And and sympathy and empathy for my fellow men. I think a lot beyond a lot of natural human tendencies to drift towards single solution ideologies and finger pointing ideologies and what have you. I would agree with this gentleman that we men we suffer from a deep, more than deep, visceral need for female companionship. expresses itself the minute we hit puberty. It's very different to the need that the female has. The need has, uh, the female has need for um, labor or resources. And ultimately it doesn't matter if those resources come from a man or not. It's, it's just very different. So men have this deep uh, seated need to have female companionship, not just for sex, but for a lot of the, the sort of nurturing, motherly kind of uh, feeling that I imagine they, a lot of men envision in women. It's part of the illusion. Um, but this video is all about coming to terms with reality. And part of being an adult, among many th other things, is accepting that some things will never be. Uh, maybe you thought when you were a child you were going to be an astronaut. I know I didn't. but uh, and some point in time you have to come with the rather soul come to the rather soul crushing realization that it's not going to happen um, the problem I can understand man, men's yearning I have sympathy for that and even empathy because at some point in time in my life I was there as well but men need to accept reality this is the problem I think a lot of the hostility we sense from some of the men towards, say, the men going their own way message and what have you, comes from the simple fact that they just do want, don't want it to be true. They want to believe in what, unfortunately, is just a fairy tale. Love, at least the love you've been indoctrinated into, the love that is bandied about and prattled about in society, is a sham. It's an illusion. It never was. It, it is not. And it will not be. And as much as you might yearn for that illusion, it's not going to make it true. I want you those, those words to sink into your head. Anyone who views this. As much as you want the illusion to be true, uh, to be true it's not going to make it true. It's just because you want it to be true. Life is saddled with disappointments, and admittedly, for the man, for the male being, that the male essence, if you will, so craves female companionship on more than anything else, it seems, in life. And this realization, and the internalization of that realization more than anything else, not just the realization, anyone can realize something, 
it's when you actually internalize something that your behavior reflects that realization. Until you've internalized it, it's just, say, a talking point, something you might have learned in a lecture, in a book, something you might agree with on a peripheral, superficial level. But to internalize it means you're, you're living according to that realization. Whatever that realization uh, informs you of, that, that, is, uh, that is the information that is guiding, part of the information that's guiding your life. And the simple fact is, women never loved men. They've always loved what men could do for them. And the modern age has shown that to be even more so the case. Uh, it's even more apparent, obvious, patently obvious, that this is the case. Women do not love men. They do not love men. And I know that pains many men to hear, and I know that's the message that men do not want to hear. And I know that's part of a lot of the hostility towards men going their own way. Because, unfortunately, this is the harsh reality that men need to accept, and many men just aren't there yet. They don't want to accept it. Love is a sham. It always has been. It doesn't exist. Now, I'm paraphrasing Barbarossa, but one of the videos, which I thought was a landmark video for me, I don't recall its title, but he essentially said something to the effect of, and I'm paraphrasing, that there is no mommy out there for you. There's no woman who's going to uh, embrace you and open arms and, and take away your worries and pains and, and, and cares and wants and needs. This is an illusion. This is the illusion you've been fed since your childhood. And as much as you want it to be true, it's not, and it never will be true. There are many people, mostly adults, who believe in all sorts of things which are patently false because it makes them feel good uh, or they want to have hope. I, I realize how difficult this is. I think this is, at the end of the day, the crux and the core of the issue. It is extremely painful to the male being to, to realize, accept, and then finally internalize that there is no woman out there who will love you. Women do not know love. They do not, certainly, at least, perhaps they know it for their own direct progeny, uh, although that's, that's highly variable, as we know. Um, but it, certainly they don't know it for men. Um, and given, as has been discussed recently, the mechanization and technological advancement of modern society, they don't even need men, men's resources anymore, although they don't mind stealing them uh, quite often. There is no female angelic figure out there who's, who's going to save you from the, the pain of your loneliness, who's going to show you compassion, who's going to help you. It doesn't exist. Um, yeah, I know. It, it, it clearly is to many men a painful realization, and the internalization of that realization is even more, pain, more painful. But at some point in time, you need to move past that. If at one point in time in your life, the greatest sense of fulfillment was the companionship of a woman, you need to find a new sense of fulfillment that does not reside in the companionship of a woman. If you have seen past the illusion, if you've taken the red pill, you can't go back. If Riffle's Law has any veracity whatsoever, and I think it does, and it observe it in your own relationships with women, you will um, you will realize these things. Once again, I, I speak on this topic uh, from coming from uh, a feeling of compassion and empathy and sympathy. At some point in time in my life, I was there as well. It is a very dark, dark Feeling to know that you are completely alone and that no one in the world is going to help you out of the hole that you're in except yourself. Barring, I said, the occasional friend. But unfortunately, this, this perception of the females as a figure of salvation 
it is is very much to your detriment to my fellow men it is not healthy if you know it to be a lie and you want it to be true you're going to encounter problems if you buy into the illusion and the fairy tale of, of love and the kind loving uh, understanding female uh, figure well I suppose that's not an issue but if you realize that it's untrue then it will be an issue and it's clearly to some very devastating and if you want to hold on uh, to that to that sliver of hope which isn't hope at all it's the hope it's 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 nothing it doesn't doesn't exist this this idea that uh, there's there that a woman will sweep you off your uh, well not so much sweep you off your feet but alleviate you of all your troubles and worries who's going to be there for you and it's true it, it is in your nature as a man to crave that to believe that even it's a combination of biological drives and instincts and social indoctrination and just having it hammered into you since you were a kid. So you crave that. But just because you want something to be true, it doesn't make it true. So all I can do, and I'd say this is the core of my message, is to stop chasing an illusion. I know it's painful. I know it's difficult. I know you don't want it to want to believe it. I know when I realized it a while back, I didn't want to believe it either. Even though I had had the sneaking suspicion, as I know many of you do as well, for many years, that it was thus. It is perhaps for the man, the, the individual man, one of the greatest, most disturbing truths to realize, to recognize. However, uh, there, there's no way past it. Um, like I said, just because you want something to be true doesn't make it true. Just because some, a, a vision or a dream makes you feel good doesn't mean that dream or vision will come true. I say this with all the compassion and sympathy in the world. You need to move beyond that and put that behind you. It's a lie. Love is a lie. What you've been told is a lie. Just move past it. Accept truth. There is a stark beauty to accepting the cold and harsh reality of the truth. It's something that the sham and illusion of purported love will never give you. That's all I really have to say. But uh, this is the core of my message. Accept reality as it is. Good night. So what do I mean by purpose? Of course, purpose in this context, I'm talking and talking about purpose, I'm talking about ambition, drive, energy output, all these things that are somehow related to that. And specifically, uh, for men who have taken the red pill, and henceforth I will not be using this term anymore, I don't think. It's been, uh, well, I'm a bit tired of hearing it and it's been misappropriated. So I'll be simply referring to uh, the reality check that men experience. So the reality check that men who decide to go their own way experience, and even for PUAs perhaps, and any man out there who happens to be aware of the circumstances of the world and the circumstances they are in, might begin to notice certain things about their own ambitions, desires, drives, and so on and so forth. We evolved uh, as beings of service. Uh, we have rendered services unto others, both to men and to women, and that is the history of, of our evolution. Uh, men have achieved great, great things, but it seems almost exclusively, almost, not entirely, in ex in the service to others, in the service to women primarily. Uh, why are we ambitious? Why do we have drive? Why do we uh, 
create purpose for ourselves as men in the world? Well, it seems rather clear, at least in evolutionary terms, uh, to attract mates, uh, to achieve status, and to compete within the dominance hierarchy. Even, and once again, on approximate level, even if this is not uh, something that we are readily aware of, uh, far from it, there are plenty of people doing plenty of things that they're completely unaware of that might have uh, very different causes than the ones that they believe or choose to ascribe to their activities. So, once again, ultimate cause. Even men such as Tesla, Newton, uh, who were unmarried, and certainly people who were married, men who were such as Einstein, uh, Wittgenstein, uh, Bertrand Russell. I mean, the question I have to pose, and I'll be then breaking that down, is despite their greatness, despite their genius, their energy output and their relentless drive to pursue certain intellectual goals, or for that matter, in the case of athletes, to pursue athletic goals, where all that stems from. That is to say, without this evolutionary background, the desire to be of service to women, uh, in some semi-conscious state, and even in an unconscious state due to ultimate cause, uh, it seems unlikely that men are willing to put the energy, time, and work into uh, anything to the extent that they could otherwise. And this doesn't have to be merely about geniuses, and I'm not even speaking about geniuses. I'm speaking about normal uh, men, such as myself or others, that uh, in, 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 in gaining that reality check and becoming aware of the reality check, simply notice something about themselves. What have you noticed uh, about yourself since, especially if you're older, especially if you're older since you've had your reality check? Well, certainly I've noticed that although I'm not, I've never been a particularly ambitious man. I think I've always been, uh, for better or worse, uh, not very good at that. Um, but for better or worse as well, I certainly have noticed that whatever ambitions I had uh, in extremis, uh, are not are now not entirely gone, but certainly uh, mollified and diminished to a great extent. Now, there is a mild lesson to be learned here, I think. The lesson being that much of what men do, and this is this has been observed, is for the sake of women. But the degree to which they do it, and the amount of energy they're willing to expend, that is the interesting thing. Now, as I said, I've never been a particularly ambitious person for better or worse, that's just not my, in my character. But whatever ambitions I did have were, I would say, significantly reduced. Um, and I suspect that, as I said, in an ultimate cause scenario or in an ultimate cause sense, the, the drive, the desire for maximum outcome to really achieve uh, has to be fueled by this competitive nature which ultimately has its origins in the desire for uh, female approval and competition with the dominance hierarchy for and gaining status to attract females. If, however, you've had your reality check and fully internalized it, I don't just mean realize, and I've made a video about this distinction before, uh, fully internalize the reality check of the nature of men and the nature of women and the nature of the great game we're all playing or not playing in some of our cases, there doesn't seem much reason to be ambitious anymore, nor does there seem to be much reason to uh, bust your ass to do very much. Uh, it's not to say your interests decline. I still have many interests, but uh, I'm not pursuing those interests in the voracious capacity I could otherwise if I were still uh, swallowing uh, blue-hued uh, pills. There's a difference. And... I think this is something that's endemic to men and almost impossible to get rid of uh, on a very basic level. The desire to engage in activities at your maximum energy ex expenditure output, your ability to fully capitalize on your ambitions, if you will, your, uh, your drive to create purpose for yourself, is, has its roots in this ultimate cause of simply desiring to... Uh, gain status in the eyes of women. Whether we consciously acknowledge that or not, therein uh, lies the rub. And when you withdraw from that model, 
when you leave it behind, when you no longer compete, when it is no longer important to you, whether we want to acknowledge it or not, I think the vast, vast, vast majority of men, uh, I would include, of course, myself in this, some experience, a severe reduction in our quote-unquote ambition. And most of us are content just to uh, live uh, semi-comfortable lives or comfortable lives pursuing our hobbies without uh, attempting to push the boundaries beyond uh, whatever they might be for that comfortable existence. So beyond just putting bread on the table and serving your family, the man, the man's higher calling, if you will, his desire to achieve quote-unquote greatness, to push beyond all boundaries, has its roots in something that has been with us for millions and millions of years. And thus I believe, well, ineradicable. We cannot get rid of this, it seems. Um, I find it somewhat annoying because when I was younger, <laughs> I certainly wanted to achieve a lot more than I do now. Now I'm reasonably content doing what I'm doing, although there's certainly circumstances could be changed for the better. But the energy expenditure, the desire to just head out there and achieve in the world and, and, and get things done, once you've had your reality check, uh, that, that tends to uh, be reduced quite a great deal. So there's something about maximizing energy expenditure in men and ambition, purpose in that sense, that dwindles to a very large extent when you take women out of the picture, whether we like it or not. I think it's it's as much an unconscious reflex as the desire or maybe the the unconscious reflex to hold the door for a woman or pick up some some object she's dropped just because she's a woman, whereas you would never do that for a man. And this has led me, of course, to theorize and think about other things related to this. Now, often we talk often, or one has talked often about uh, male suicide after uh, relationship breakups or the destruction of a marriage after a divorce uh, has been filed on the part of a woman. And I believe it's not just because this woman is the most important person in the man's life, but this woman is the center of the man's life. But what about this woman is the center of his life? You have to go into specifics here. Well, I believe, for unfortunately, that women, in, sen in, in, a, in a very deep sense, due to our millions of years of evolution, give men purpose. When you take that out of the picture, so a man who's lost his, his home, his children, I mean, yeah, he's been stripped of everything on approximate level that he holds dear, but in a much, much greater sense, on an ultimate cause level, he's been stripped of his very purpose for being, uh, his service to his family, to his children, and if, you know, society at large. Um, notice also the differences. It's not that women, for example, don't engage in serviceable activities. I mean, they engage in charities. How many of them, however, risk their lives or put themselves in danger or, at the very least, uh, engage in strenuous activities and doesn't have to necessarily be physical in order to accommodate others at their own expense? I think you'll find that very, very rare by way of comparison to men. So, in addition to the proximate cause uh, issue of men just, you know, losing all their worldly goods, their families, their wives, their homes, their property. There's something about, on a very, very deep level, about men that we have that is endemic to us and congenital, I fear, that automatically reduces our drives and ambitions. Now, I know many people are going to disagree with me on this, I imagine, but uh, live a little, little bit longer and see what happens. See if you can relentlessly pursue the same goals you once had with the same degree of tenacity once you've had your reality check. When you re realize that the game is rigged, uh, there's not much point in playing the game anymore, and that includes investing energy, time, money, and all the other related variables into the game. This is something that... I suspect, might be impossible to overcome. Uh, every man I know who, I mean, it's impossible, of course, to measure what 100% energy exp expenditure would be, but every man I know who works very, very hard 
uh, beyond just simply paying the bills or some something that's absolutely necessary, such as paying for university tuition, uh, isn't I don't is not uh, trying to achieve his very very best. Um, if he's already had the reality check, whereas the other men I know who have not had the reality check are doing just that. They're working really, really hard, whereas we, who choose to go our own way, tend to try to minimize the amount of uh, work we're doing for good reason, for good evolutionary reasons. So this is an interesting thing, I think, an interesting observation I've made countless times about myself and about others. I mean, I, I freely admit I'm not as ambitious as I used to be, uh, prior to my reality check, as well as the various phases between that. Now, there are, of course, men who never really fully make the reality check. And like I said, I'm not going to be using this term red pill very much because it's it's been abused, misappropriated, and it's just it's used all the time. It's really lost its um, force. But, and so th- they'll struggle with other issues. But for those of us who've internalized these issues to the point where a lot of the the more superficial issues, if you will, that we that men have with women are in the past, this is an issue that will affect us. I mean, how hard are we willing to work uh, for ourselves? Um, it's not, as I said, when a man loses his worldly goods, it's not just that he's losing his worldly goods, he's losing his very purpose. Now, I don't know if it's achievable, but I think a reasonable goal that men can set for themselves in light of this is to really think about this question and think about a different sort of set of circumstances, if possible, that might motivate high degrees of energy expenditure. Um, And once again, we have to be aware that a lot of this is just ultimate cause. Uh, You know, it's obvious that my friend working seven days a week during budget season is not thinking, well, I'm doing this so I can get the approval of women and uh, gain status in the dominance hierarchy. Of course he's not doing that. Nobody does that. But the ultimate reasons, even in cases of um, abstemious men such as Newton or the famed Nikola Tesla, it has to hark back to some evolutionary source. And you don't see it replicated in women. Uh, Women are not beings of service. Uh, And I think this is one of the primary reasons why women deal with breakups a lot more easily and don't really get that bothered by divorces and tend not to kill themselves as often. I mean, their purpose, and once again, purpose is this human construct, is not rooted in their service to others. And their ability to expand energy is also not rooted in their uh, desire to be of service to others. When a woman works really hard, and of course there are women who do this, they do it for themselves, they're not doing it for others. When a man works really hard, he's doing it for others, even if he doesn't realize that. So these are some powerful differences between the sexes, between the genders, that I think bear further, uh, or should bear further exploration and observation. But um, it's something I have to say, for me personally, is a bit irritating, because at least in my own regard, in on my own respects, I sometimes had a lot of energy and, and a lot of ambition with uh, certain things. And you know, to a little bit of more disclosure on my part, as you know, many, many of you know, I speak several foreign languages. Back in the day, I was a lot more ambitious. Now, now I'm trying to catch up on my Korean, and the desire to invest the energy I did when I was younger is simply not there. And I do not believe this is related to my old age. I think it's just related to a general sense of kind of what's the point? Um, why should I spend all this energy? Whereas in back in the day, ambition itself was enough. It was the, the simply a desire to be the best at what I was doing at the time uh, that was enough. And in an evolutionary sense, that serves a great purpose. But what, what comes of it afterwards? Um, there are benefits to this, too. I mean, being more laid back obviously has benefits. Less stress, uh, fewer worries, better sleep. Um, one thing that has helped a great deal in my life, having had my reality check, of course, has been my, in my, my um, problems with insomnia. I mean, I had, I've, I'll always have insomnia, I suspect, but, you know, a couple of years back, six, seven, eight years back, I was having some, I, was, I wasn't sleeping for two and a half days in a row. A lot of this had to do with existential 
worries and anxieties tied into this um, evolutionary ball dance that we used to, I used to engage in. With that gone, my sleep has improved uh, greatly. It's not perfect. It never will be. I don't sleep like a normal human being. But it has improved. So there are benefits and there are trade-offs. I wonder. I wonder how men can tap into that extra energy that has allowed them to create civilization. And unfortunately, for the singular purpose of achieving status in an ultimate cause sense, to benefit themselves. Because I don't know if that's possible. Men do things for other people, even if they do it for themselves, even if they say they do it for themselves. The, the shyster lawyer or uh, professional con man uh, ripping people off for their money, taking advantage of people's weaknesses, seems to be a selfish individual. But of course, achieve, getting, you know, gaining monetary favor and achieving monetary success will gain them status. So once again, ultimate cause, proximate cause. Uh, Men are beings of service. And Barbaro said this very well. You exist to serve. And when you relinquish, relinquish that service, the question remains, what are you going to do with your abilities, with your individual cap capacities and your desires? Um, all of us have our hobbies and interests. The question is, how far will we go with our hobbies and interests, with our desires, our drives, with our ambitions, lacking that, or that ambition, or rather lacking that, pardon me, Lacking that, that, that core motive, and as they say in German, the, the, the Leitmotiv, the, the thing that leads you down the path, the thing that is pushing you further. It seems to me it's very difficult in grasping these things uh, to do without, without still uh, being on the other side of, of the ocean, being a quote-unquote blue pillar, right? Very, very difficult. Anyway, a bit rambly, but I was I was having a conversation with a friend today about this, and it's something I've been talking and thinking about for quite some time, so there you go. I'm going to be talking about the projection effect today. You can see in the screenshot I'm sharing with you that that comment, those two comments by the gentleman Charlie S., although to me uh, not very interesting in content, did spur me on to speak about this. It seems, and I've talked about this before, that so many people, particularly men, are just nonplussed, baffled, bemused beyond uh, recognition, beyond uh, any, uh, any level of, of measurement that I could actually say and think the things that I do, that I actually mean what I say and say what I mean that I act upon what I mean and say. It's just so baffling. Uh, it's so baffling that they come up with comments like this. Now, he goes on to, be, to talk about some sort of void, and this can only be filled with a woman. I think we all have voids, and I've talked about this, and Barbara says as well. I think men, deep down, have a void to connect intellectually, ultimately, as Barbarossa intimated in that video, his most recent, one of his most recent videos, the very excellent one, uh, Humanity First and Foremost, what are the memories you actually have of the past, of random fucks you've had with girls or even fucks you've had with, with girlfriends? My ex-wives, and that's Stardust talk, by the way, I always refer to my exes as ex-wives. My ex-wives, uh, when I think I, their faces are completely blurry to me, I can barely remember what they look like. Uh, the sex, even in the best cases, uh, one of them who was violent, psychotic, and at the same time very good in bed, I, so such a long time I don't even remember that. However, however, I do remember striking conversations with individuals, the vast majority of whom have been men. Uh, insightful conversations, uh, moments of intellectual bonding, and so on and so forth. The the pair bonding effect, you know, fucking and uh, and what have you. This just withers and fizzles out into the, into a haze of the of a distant memory. That I think is the void, as Barbaros has intimated, that that we have as men, much more so than 
uh, this this a void for a woman, which is effectively what he's saying, the void for the need to reproduce. I mean, that's all he's saying, basically. But, yeah, the level of bemusement and, and just incredulity that, that I could actually believe and say what I say and do what I do, it's just, it's too much for them. Now, there's a, another element to this, and this is the the comfort of the collective lie. And we've seen this in religion throughout the ages, particularly in, in modern times. It's okay as long as everyone else believes the lie. You see, that's, that's, that's the modus operandi here. It's okay if everyone else believes the lie. It's okay if I lie to myself. And what men going their own way are doing is divesting themselves of this lie and saying it, well, telling the world how it actually is. And this, once again, seems to upset people, but also it, 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 it causes a rupture in their collective lie. You know, like a large religious body of religious people who, you know, who for the first time experience uh, the true nature of their religious delusion. It makes them feel good, but then when you when you puncture that that bubble that they've been living in, they they all start getting upset. Now, there's no doubt that feminism has been capital F feminism has been disastrous upon Western civilization, and now upon Eastern civilizations as well. It's just, it's been a giant mess. But, you know, we live in reality. We need to accept things on their own terms. We need to accept things for what they are. And it happened. Feminism happened. So, what is the positive? And I'm not saying feminism itself is positive. The positive is the information we have gathered. Feminism has revealed to us the true nature of the female. That females en masse, whether they call themselves feminists or not, will do certain things without any hesitation, without any regard to their men. Or their men in their lives, or men at, whole, uh, on, uh, at, at large. So feminism effectively has been a revelation. And the, pe the people who are, who are always ranting on about anti-feminism and the, the traditionalists as well. I mean, these are people who, as I say, I liken to a body of religious people who have had their religious bubble of delusion popped and refuse to, refuse to accept reality. They want to go back to the, the religious bubble, but it can't be returned to. It's gone because the bubble's been popped. It's, there's a rupture in the bubble. They want everyone to just join in the collective lie to make themselves feel good. This is why people fall for the, the ghost of Karl Marx. That Karl Marx, this is why they believe, although they've never actually said this, although you, if they were, <laughs> it could be easily uh, extracted from some of their claims that Karl Marx had a time machine and journeyed back 200,000 years in the past to manipulate early Homo sapiens. That Karl Marx this, uh, Hegelian dialectic that, uh, and so on and so forth, that, that Karl Marx somehow and communism and socialism have, 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 are the, 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 the keys to understanding feminism. Now, no one's denied that there's a relationship between the two, but it has to go deeper it has always has to go deeper than some merely political ideology. What is it about then, if you're going to make the claim, Karl Marx and communism and socialism, that makes it so appealing to women? What is what the biological quality characteristic of females that allows them, or rather permits them, to just fall for it without uh, very much thought, without thinking twice about it? So, but but that's a that's a one size uh, fits all solution. Oh, it's Karl Marx. The, defeat the left, the same thing. Defeat the left, everything's solved. This is how primitive religious people think. The great Satan, defeat Satan, he's gone. Everything's going to be good. Complex questions with simple answers, but complex questions beget complex answers more often than not. So. 
when we talk about when I'm talking about projection, this desire for our collective lie, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Be it the religious collective delusion or the collective delusion about the biological realities we face as men and women. People want to go back to the lie. Feminism popped a hole in the bubble. There is a rupture. And the rupture is just oozing now. It's impossible to repair. As I've said many times, barring civilization class, we're not going back to the alleged good old days. So it falls to us to reap lessons from that ruptured bubble rather than lamenting the fact that the bubble is there and uh, it's been ruptured and there's a, a gaping wound or a hole in it. I mean, th that's not going to bring us forward. We're not going to make progress that way, men or women, by lamenting the past, by ruining the day that feminism uh, took its politicized form. That doesn't help anyone. What will help us is understanding the biological nature and motivation of men and women. Not pining, as this guy uses the term, pining away. Pining away for a woman. I guess this is what this guy does. He, he's pining away for a woman. This is this is uh, you know, monkey monkey I see no evil, hear no evil, uh, speak no evil. This is just shut shut your eyes to the world, shut your ears to the world, shut your mouth to the world, and just believe. Feminism unfortunate as it's been, has been a revelation. And now we, for the first time since possibly antiquity, because I believe the ancients had a much more realistic, realistic perspective on these things, we are empowered with the knowledge to deal with each other effectively on a bio, purely biological basis, which of course leads then to culture and the political institutions we have as men and women. And given that the stakes are so high, we don't really have a choice. We have to deal in reality. But like I said, just like the religious religionists uh, who uh, revel in their collective delusion, you'll have people re reveling, both men and women, in the collective delusion of romantic love, of pair bonding, of, of all of this silliness that only existed because... It had to, because without it, no one would have survived very long. And that's gone. That era is gone. We're living in 2013. The bubble has a gaping, rupturing, ruptured wound. It's weeping blood. Do you want to constantly stare at it and, and, and talk about it and talk about the good old days? Or do you, do you want to move forward? Do we want to move forward and understand things as they actually are? Now, a lot of this is repetition, but sometimes repetition is very valuable. One point I would like you to take away from this uh, is that people will settle for lies and delusions if everyone else believes them because it makes them feel good. People are not necessarily, rarely, after ver veridical content. They're not necessarily chasing after, after the truth. If the truth makes them feel good, they'll accept it. If not, they'll reject it. Now, the idea that we all have this void pining away from, on a final note, it's, if you actually, I've said this many times, if you actually understand women, no such void will exist. I guarantee it. If you actually understand the calculus involved, you will not have this void. Ergo, this gentleman certainly does not understand women. And in the words of the immortal Barbarossa, that's all I got to say for now. More to come.